All right, everybody, so you can hear me now, I assume. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. And um, let's see. Let's hope this works again. My atmospheric conditions look quite nice tonight. <clears throat> I haven't started capturing it all yet. I'm just I'm just showing now, and I also need to go through um, all of the color filters to get that set up. So I'm going to send share some social links now on the social medias. Um, let's see, I need to copy the link. And I need to send myself a screenshot. There we go. Yeah, so I'll, you know, talk to myself here. Okay, cool. So there's that. So yeah, um, not even due to go live yet for another five minutes. So welcome early birds, I guess. Should we make that a little bit bigger just for funsies? Yes, right. Yes. Okay. There. What's that? So the, the great red spot is starting to show right around down here where the mouse cursor is. Okay, that is saved. Okay, I need to add this. Hopefully the clouds stay away because they are threatening just here and there. So. Live now. Stream for Jupiter. Great. Red. Okay. I wish I had a color camera for this particular type of thing, but I don't, so. Ooh, see it popping around, it's starting to pop down there at the bottom. Storms there, oh boy. Okay. Okay, so we've got that. Okay. I'm gonna put it on Instagram. See this social stuff. I need somebody to. So I just tweeted. Um, please, if you're on Twitter and you follow me, please go and retweet the stream link that I just tweeted. That would be awesome. Wow, 
That's actually looking pretty good. Does it look pretty good for you guys? Look pretty good for me. Um, let's see. Let's see. Instagram. Oh, then I gotta look at my profile. <laughs> okay, so that's them. Okay, so I need to start talking for real now because technically this is the beginning of the stream. So, hello and welcome to the official live stream of Jupiter's Great Red Spot, which can now be seen just entering the bottom of the planet right down here where the mouse cursor is on the screen. This is a live stream of Jupiter trying to show the transit of the great red spot, the big storm on Jupiter. as it is transiting the planet right now. My atmospheric conditions are pretty darn good. I'm going to switch to some color filters to see how those are looking. Switch to red first. So interestingly enough, I wonder if we bin red. No, definitely not. Let's not do that. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, call it at about eighty percent. So I'm going to set the each color is going to be at about 80%. So when we do a capture, they will be balanced nicely. Okay, that was green. Now I'm going to switch to blue. Wow, really, that spot is really showing up good with blue. So that's a good thing to notice. So I'm going to leave it on blue for a little while. That's freaking awesome, actually. Okay, so this is the Jupiter with the Great Red Spot through the blue filter. Um, 
as it's showing now. If you have any questions, um, just let me know and I will answer everything I can. Um, I'm not going to tell you something if I don't know the answer, but I will do my best. Let's see, what are the default ROIs we can try? 800 by, let's try. No. Let's, how about we do this? Let's make it huge. Okay, so we can see the great red spot there, right there. That is the great red spot as it is. Yes, the dark dot is the red dot. So the dark spot is the right there. Now this is through the blue filter. So the only reason We're going to cancel that. We want to make it a little bigger. Let's do that. Yeah. So, this is the blue. Okay, so I'm using a command 51 thing at a time here. Okay, so this is um this is the blue filter. Down here is the great red spot. Um, it's dark because there's not a lot of blue at all in that um, in that region in the great red spot. So um, that's why when you use the blue, it's it shows up very dark, so it's easy to see. So we can leave it there um, for a little while. I'm gonna move. It's actually looking really good. So um, just now I'm gonna do an imaging sequence. Um, of this particular thing so that I can actually do um, so I can get a nice image going from the stream so I'm gonna set that up now I'm gonna shoot 30 seconds through each color filter and I'll explain why I'm gonna do that in just a second So that's set up. Okay, so it's starting to come around the bend now, which is cool. Okay, in the red filter, it's going to be, um, we're going to see that just now. It's going to be a lighter color, so it'll be harder to see against the planet. But, but we'll see that um, just now as I do an imaging run. Um, somebody, somebody asked James. Good day, sir. So um, it is a 12-inch Ritchie Cretien telescope, um, F8, which I'm running at now. Um, I'm not using a Barlow or a PowerMate um, just to make things easier um, and then the view just perfectly clear. It's good enough right now. So um, So yeah, uh, and I'm using a Celestron um, CGEM DX mount. Um, the mount is overloaded. This telescope weighs about 25 kilograms on its own just for the telescope. So this thing is super heavy. It's really only good on this mount for um, planetary and lunar. It doesn't track well enough for um, deep sky. So unfortunately, I'm limited, but that's okay. Um, so. The camera I'm using is an uh, ZWO ASI um, 290mm. 
So yeah, um, if you were looking at this in the eyepiece, you would see those dark sections as like a reddish brown type of color. Um, the lighter sections you'd see, they look white, um, just a little off-white. And that the dark red spot is the storm, um, the giant storm that's many, 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 many big, much bigger than Earth. Um, that storm uh, would be a reddish, a little bit lighter red, color um, right now so that's what you're seeing right now uh, the mag magnification of my scope uh, it's it's 12 inch at f8 so what you do is you convert that to millimeters which is about 280 or so um, millimeters multiplied by f8 and that's about when you do the math it's around 2304 millimeters I'm going to put this in here, so it's a 12 inch um, RCF8 camera ASI290MM monochrome. Now, what we will do now is we're going to go ahead, oops, put it back in the center nicely. I am going to switch over to the red filter now. We're going to actually do an imaging run on it, okay? So that means I'm going to do an automated image capture with red, green, and blue filters, and then luminance, which is are um, all colors is basically a clear filter so this is the red filter this is what it looks like with red um, and you can see you can see here that there's not a lot going on in the red it's it's actually pretty boring to look at in red This actually isn't the best planetary scope. Contrast isn't as good as I'd like. Um, I would love uh, one of the Edge HD scopes. Uh, you know, definitely the 14 would be amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an automated imaging run of all three colors because seeing it's just seeing is just looking good right now. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Let's do this. Okay, make sure we don't have any issues with this. Okay, so what it's going to do now is this is going to capture 30 seconds of red, 30 seconds of green, 30 seconds of blue. And 30 seconds of luminance. Luminance is all three colors I want, so it's basically just a clear glass filter. Um, and luminance is used for um, more for detail. So the the colors you really capture just specifically for the color, and then when you want details, that's what you use the luminance filter for. And then you combine them all in post-production. Okay, so that was green. Now we're moving on to blue. So blue is pretty much, it looks the best um, for viewing the spot itself. <laughs> That's right. In the red, there's kind of nothing <laughs> because it's mostly just white. Um, so where you see white on the planet will be white on every color filter. Um, so when you look at it in red, um, you obviously don't see much because uh, it is red. Okay, so now we're going to switch back to luminance, and this is what it looks like in loom. So this is all, all f three colors at once and detail. to move back. 
So the software I'm using is uh, called Fire Capture. It's a, it's a really good software for planetary imaging, um, specifically with this camera and quite a few others. So and now that I've got this going, I'm going to do another capture of just luminance for two minutes because when you do it for two minutes um, you can actually get a lot more frames and with the scene as it is now it looks pretty good um, and I want to just get at least one nice sharp um, capture that I can use a lot of uh, video frames for so I'm capturing at 200 frames per second so you know two minutes I'm gonna get a lot of frames this is gonna be a huge file so it's gonna work nicely yes so the pictures that I take are one after another in time yes so um, what it does is it takes 30 seconds of red, it takes 30 seconds of green, 30 seconds of blue, and then 30 seconds of loom. Loom, luminance, is, is just that clear glass filter. Um, so it's all of them. And then in post, what you do is you run it through a piece of software that identifies the sharpest video frames in the entire sequence. And it takes those and stacks them on top of each other and it averages out the pixels in each frame so that you get a nice um, smooth image with no noise so that you only get the actual good raw data that's in the in the image um, so that it's accurate and scientifically correct so um, that's why I do that and then you can sharpen those and then you can combine them um, in image processing software so that the red channel is mapped to red and green and blue just like just like that is because all images are red green and blue They're made up of RGB red green, green and blue and then the luminance layer um, is just what I use for um, detail so if a lot of people that I know they actually don't use luminance a luminance layer which um, I'm fine with that a lot of people don't want to take the time to shoot loom but the thing is when you do shoot loom you can get a lot more detail in it no questions are bad questions so don't worry about that being curious is the kind of the best thing you can do so yeah, I mean, what we're seeing now, this is, this is pretty good. You can see that storm coming up. You can actually see some nice detail in it. Um, I think we should do another automated image run. So that means we have to switch back to red again, unfortunately. We'll start here. do this again so again this is starting on red you can see that in the screen on the upper upper uh, left upper left hand side of the view there it shows exactly what's being captured yeah it's far it is far that's another thing about um, Jupiter it's very interesting to to note um, with the speed of light um, and it's hard for humans to really to really wrap your head around um, you know how far these things are like what does that even mean you know what does that even mean in distance it's really far what does it even mean in speed you're talking about light speed so think about it this way what we're seeing right now the light that's coming into my telescope that's going into the camera and it's coming out to you on YouTube right now is 45 minutes ago in actual real time because of the speed of light we can, we're, what we're seeing is 45 minutes into the past. So we're literally looking back in time by 45 minutes. I'll let that sink in for a minute now. 45 minutes ago, 
This is in the past. This is literally when you look through a telescope at things far away, like, I mean, planets are super close. This is really, really close. This is very close to us. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, even stars, the nearest star is around four light years away. Um, light years, not light minutes. Jupiter is 45, 45 light minutes away. So, I mean, I'm just going to let that kind of <laughs> sink in because it's just insane. It's insane to think about. 45 light minutes away. So we're looking 45 minutes in the past. I'm repeating myself because it blows my mind every time I think about it. I mean, if you want a time machine, we've got one right here. You know, this you're looking in the past. <laughs> And not just because, you know, YouTube Live gives it, you know. <laughs> okay, so what, what view do you guys want? Do you, do you want the darker view? you want the... There you go. Thank you. Like I said, about four light years. Yep. So we've got this view here. Let's switch back to... to um, Let's switch to green, because it looks pretty nice in green. <laughs> so there's green. There's the red spot. There's the storm right there. Pretty nice view. Yeah, 54, because the thing is, yeah, yeah, it's also, um, you know, in the orbit, depending on where Jupiter's orbit is. So when I say 45, 54, it's, you know, around there. My numbers are approximate and time dependent. Ah, it's looking really good. Sheesh. I feel like I should adjust focus just in case. Because I want to make sure that this is super tight, you know? So I'm going to spend some time on focus now. <laughs> Focusing is the hardest part about planetary imaging because you can make tiny adjustments, and I'm using an automated um, focuser motor from Prima Lucha Lab. Uh, and it's a 12 inch aperture. The aperture of the telescope is 12 inches, so that's about, what, 280 or so millimeters. Um, it's hard to say if I'm getting this better or worse or staying the same because of the atmosphere, but let's give it a try. Let's go back and let's just take a look at this for a minute. Yeah, Venus is pretty cool to look at. It's nice and bright. Okay, I just adjusted focus, so I'm going to go back to red so that we're going to do another imaging capture run. Oops. Okay, there's that. And let's go. All right. The atmosphere is not too bad right now. It's pretty decent. Um, I would call it fair, fair to good. I've seen it better, but it's pretty good. So I'm doing another imaging run now. I'm going to run through red, green, and blue filters. And the luminance again. So we can see just as time is moving by, it's, it's moving across you know, the face of the planet already. Um, so I've got some information about the Great Red Spot, and just just because uh, I'm not a planetary scientist, I'm not, um, you know, 
qualified, so I'm just reading off of Wikipedia. I am an astrophotographer. I am a guy that has a telescope in his backyard, and um, I'm just doing this because I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to inspire some people. So basically, it's it's a persistent high pressure region in the atmosphere of Jupiter. So it is it's a it's a storm. <laughs> Literally, it's a huge um, like cyclonic storm, a cyclone. It's the largest in the solar system. Um, it's about 22 degrees south of the equator of Jupiter. So it's, there's the bands, those, those two bands of clouds, those darker bands of clouds on the planet that you can see right now um, are called the equatorial bands. So there's the north equatorial band and the south equatorial band. Uh, band, the NEB and the SEB, people call them the SEB and the NEB, um, and the Great Red Spot is always in the SEB, and it has been for, um, let's see, they say that we've known that it's existed for at least 360 years, um, people started looking at the Great Red Spot for, um, you know, 360 years at least. Uh, which is which is very cool to think about. So, I mean, it's just huge. It is massive. It is massive. So this is we're looking at an luminance right now. So this is all the colors all at once. Um, what I can do is I can adjust the camera. Let's see if this helps. Eh, it doesn't really help. So I'm not even going to do it. It looks better just as is. Um, I can adjust the way the screen looks, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. It looks pretty good as it is. Yeah, I think everybody's interested in space. Um, <laughs> I think if someone says they're not interested in outer space or, you know, just space in general, I think they're lying. Um, I think space and, you know, the idea of exploring the cosmos and just looking at it, at what we can see, if you take an adult and you put them at the eyepiece of a telescope for the first time, in their lives, you will see a child come out, an interested child who is just super excited. That's what that's what I think. If we get this, if this thing sits down, and stabilizes a little bit. I have to delete some files. Sorry. Um, yes. Okay. So if if this sits down and stabilizes again, we'll do another imaging run. But for now, we're just gonna we're just gonna view um, the, the Galilean moons. I don't think we can get all four, but we might be able to get a few of them. Um, what I'm going to do, let's do this, can I get any moons? One, there's one visible down there, uh, down at the bottom of the screen. So there's one of the moons. There's two of the moons that we can get at the same time. So what you're looking at now is I believe that is going to be okay, for north. That is Europa and Callisto. So down at the very bottom we can show here <clears throat> this is Europa, the moon Europa, and this is the moon 
Callisto, because if it's the south, that would be those two, I believe. Yes, let me make sure. I want to make sure that I'm telling you the right thing. I'm going to look at my planetary application on my phone. Oh no, sorry, that is Io and Ganymede. I'm backwards, I'm upside down. Um, that is the moons Io and Ganymede. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. Um, not too exciting, I mean, they're just, you know, they're just dots, but it's always interesting to kind of just have a have an idea of what we're looking at. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to, I just have to adjust the camera to get everything in focus. Then I'm going to put the planet back in the middle. And then we are going to go back to making it big. Exactly. So that was Io and Ganymede. Okay. So yeah, no, it's looking yeah. Not the greatest. I mean, looks like we won't have any cloud trouble, which is which is good. So we're going to be watching this great red spot just slowly make its way across the planet. And, um, you know, when, when things really stabilize and look good, I will do a little bit of imaging and I will uh, take some video captures that I can then turn into, um, I can turn into image, stable, um, sorry, static images. If you go back on my Twitter and um, Instagram feeds, you'll be able to see some of the shots that I've gotten in, um, during previous imaging sessions. I'm going to be constantly adjusting focus as the evening goes on, trying to get this puppy dialed in. looking pretty good believe it or not this is quite nice Oh man, it's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, oh, that's looking good. We're gonna shoot. We're gonna do it now. We're gonna shoot now. Okay, so we start with red. Always start with red. I'm gonna auto align so that the software keeps the planet in the exact same spot during the image sequence. I'm gonna start with red and I'm gonna capture 30 seconds of each color. North in the picture, north is going to be left because remember the great red spot is in the south equatorial band. So if it's in the south equatorial band, then north is left and south is right. Okay, so that was red. This is green. And then we're going to do blue after this, and then we're going to do moon. Um, I'm also going to try something different because I really am, have been uh, quite disappointed, actually, in a lot of my Jupiter imaging um, to date. I've, I've never really gotten a Jupiter image that I'm proud of. Um, and so I'm trying different things here and there 
with my telescope and uh, I know the details are small it's actually easier to get a better image of Saturn because there's really not a lot of surface detail it's just kind of you know this is this really cool ball of stripes and <laughs> and rings um, and so that's pretty easy actually to get nice images of but Jupiter is tough because there's so much detail on there so I've been trying different things here and there and I'm gonna after this I'm gonna try one thing where I'm going to actually capture more frames I'm gonna do 60 seconds per color um, and then if I need to I will do something called derotation which I can talk about in a, a different live stream sometime um, so we're gonna finish capturing this. So basically, I, I can do the whole image capture in about two minutes, um, but I want to do a minute per color next. So that's what I'm going to do. As soon as this is finished, we're gonna do one minute per color instead of thirty seconds. So. I'm going to switch back to, let's see, we'll leave it there for now. Get my auto running back on. Going to change the limits. So I basically set capture limits which is time limits and that automatically changes filters and it automatically captures video for the amount of time that I tell it to capture oh, this is looking so good okay this is the atmosphere is actually quite good right now I'm gonna go ahead and Get this going for an image capture because it's the right thing to do. So we're going to do one minute of each color and one minute of luminance. <laughs> so as soon as we get through this one minute, we've got about 50 seconds left um, on red. You can't see that spot, but you'll be able to see it when as soon as we switch to green and blue, you'll be able to see that red spot quite nice. <laughs> You might be able to see it a little bit um, right around here. You know, there's like a strange splotch there, but it'll really show up as soon as we switch to green, which is going to be in about 25 seconds now. Like I said before, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to answer anything you'd like to ask about about um, about Jupiter, about my telescope, uh, about how the imaging works, about how I capture these images. So this is green now, we're on to green. Um, this is a, uh, if you scroll up in the comments, I've got, got the equipment listed, the telescope and the camera, but I'll say it again, this is a 12 inch um, Richie Chrétien telescope um, design. Um, it runs at f8. It's got a focal length of about 2,304 millimeters. So it's the equivalent of a 2,304 millimeter lens. Um, the camera is a, is a ZWO um, make. It's called the ASI 290mm. It's a monochrome camera, so it only captures um, black and white. It doesn't capture color, but in order to get color, I actually put color filters in front of the camera. Um, a good friend of mine, Rob, uh, in Canada actually sent me a filter wheel and I had color filters so that that way I can basically do these kind of live streams because I can have it automatically capture each color, red, green, blue, and luminance, which is all, all the colors. Um, I can have it do that automatically and, and do these live streams and talk to people and show you the view and take images, take pictures all at the same time. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I 
I'm going to show this comment because it's hilarious. <laughs> um, I love this. <laughs> you like the space photography, though. Yeah, me too. Um, nobody's taking pictures of aliens and spaceships. <laughs> Uh, because uh, we haven't seen those kind of things. Um, yeah, everybody asks, they like to ask me, you know, have you seen aliens? Have you ever seen any of this kind of stuff? And the thing is, if you, when you, when you, when you understand the, the massive scale of the universe and space and where we are in the galaxy and the actual size and all of that stuff, um, of course we're going to look for that stuff because the thing is, yeah, do I believe in aliens? Sure, I think that we are not the, mo the most intelligent life, or rather, we're not the only intelligent life in the universe at all. I don't, do not think that. The universe is so big. There's so many planets, there's so many stars, there's so many galaxies, that there's, there's no way we're the only one. Um, there's math to actually back that up, um, but I'm not going to talk about that, because I'm not qualified to do so. Um, Google that, but, I mean, there's so much out there. Um, so yeah, no, I've never seen aliens. <laughs> I've never seen spaceships. No one ever has. <laughs> but we are looking for that. I mean, obviously there are programs that look for that. So we're looking at luminance. This is, oh, this is looking really good, you guys. This is a lot of detail. You should feel pretty, pretty happy with the way this is looking. It's looking really, really good. Um, right now, I'm extremely happy with this okay so that was my test of 60 second limits I'm gonna switch it back to 30 let's do let's do 45 let's do 45 seconds yeah let's do that okay it's like splitting the difference putting that Oh, I'm out of coffee. Oh, dang. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit. I'm going to go get a drink. I will be right back. I'll just let you look at this for a moment without me blathering on. So I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I find ET, if I see any aliens, I will post. Don't worry. You know? Okay. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Looks like Jupiter hasn't wandered too far, so that's good. That's looking really good. I'm going to play with the focus anyway. So how's everybody doing, though? I mean, you know, 
with all of this all this virus stuff out there. How's everybody doing? I hope everyone's okay. I hope everyone that's watching is okay and staying home and doing your bit. Because that's what we need to be doing right now. I'm going to just focus here a little bit. Can't tell if that's better or worse. So it is 3.45 in the morning right now. It sounds like my neighbor is leaving for work or something. They must be in a essential, essential service job. Um, but it's early, dang. Um, I photograph Jupiter, Saturn, I've done a little bit of Mars, and Venus. Um, I haven't bothered with any of the others just because they're basically just kind of dots um, in the telescope. So I haven't really bothered too much. Ooh, this is popping in and out of awesomeness. Is that is that you know, the right thing to say? No, you can you can photograph your own. <laughs> I have not photographed your anus. That would be rude. Um, and those jokes, you know, a lot of a lot of space people, well, you know, astronomy people, they get annoyed with um, Uranus jokes, but the thing is, I don't. I think they're great. I love it. <laughs> I think they're hilarious. I've got a 14-year-old sense of humor, so bring it on. <laughs> I can't decide if this is getting better or not. Maybe I need to just do some imaging, you know? Maybe it's better. Yeah, it's better. Okay, cool. I'm going to do an image run. It's going to be sweet. Well, I could actually image Pluto if I really wanted to. Um, it would just be a dot, though, so it would kind of suck. Um, oops. Sorry, I need to center... Why is that? Why does that look so strange? Um, it should be centered. There. Oh, that's why. I forgot I had it zoomed in. You guys are supposed to let me know when I do stupid stuff like that. Okay. Um, that doesn't look that great. That's okay, we're gonna do it anyway. Um, okay. Okay, we're gonna do this. Yeah, it's looking pretty good now. Red isn't all that cool. But it's very, very important. There's actually quite a bit of red in the coloration of Jupiter. That's why it's quite bright. A lot of the, the color detail will come in with um, green and blue, so in about, in about 20 seconds we'll see that again. We'll see that green and that blue. So again, if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, please um, retweet and reshare the posts that I've put up on Instagram and Twitter so that um, people can know that this stream is happening and they can not be bored in their homes right now. So yeah, it's 3.48 in the morning here in Johannesburg, uh, South Africa right now. It's early. I set my alarm for, geez, I don't remember what time I set it for. I think it was, I set it for 1.50 in the morning. So yeah, going for like no sleep, no sleep. Um, oh, my handles on Instagram and Twitter 
are the oops, astro shake on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, Johannesburg is my, where I live, not uh, not my handle. This is a lot of detail. This is really good. I'm super stoked about the way this is looking. Um, believe it or not, this is this is you know people always think that they're going to see this like picture perfect Hubble style image in the telescope. You you do not see that um, for any target. You do not see that, especially in a backyard type of telescope like what this is. So. Yeah, I'm in Johannesburg. Um, I am not near the meerkat. Um, depending on what your definition of near is, I'm about 12, no, not 12, yeah, about a 12 hour drive away from the meerkat, the meerkat array. Um, about 12 hours. A good friend of mine, Brendan Wainwright, um, in Cape Town, actually, um, he's. He's been to the, the Meerkat radio array in the Karua Desert um, to photograph it, actually. Uh, kind of a pipe dream of mine. I would love to do that. Uh, but it's very difficult. You have to get special permission. Um, and you can't really even see that. <laughs> Cheers, Dennis. Enjoy. Okay, so that was the image run, and looks like our scene just kind of went into the dump. That's okay. So, just so everybody knows, we captured, we just did an auto run sequence, um, an image capture. You can see that on the screen now. We did 45 seconds of red, green, blue, and luminance. And that gave us 8,900 frames per color channel um, at almost 200 frames per second for the video. So now you know kind of how I do those runs, those image runs. Again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I'm going to turn off this auto align feature. When this starts looking good, you know, let me know because I'm going to do another image run at that point. I'm going to check Twitter and Instagram to see if we've got any questions or comments. I'm getting coffee posts already. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I post nice photos of my coffee every single day because coffee is really, really important uh, to me. <laughs> so. Okay, not much going on there. I don't have to answer anything, just retweets and stuff. Okay, cool. You know what I should do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to use my Hollywood voice. I'm going to go on to Instagram Live and show this on Instagram Live so that, yeah, that'll be cool. Okay. Um, where is this live? Here we go. Um, yeah. We're going to go live. We're going to go live. Oh, I'm now live. Okay. All right, hey everyone. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I am currently live on YouTube. Um, check the link in my profile. Check uh, my stories. Check my um, basically every, everything that I've got on Twitter and on Instagram. There are links. Um, here it is right now. You can see here. This is a live view of Jupiter's great red spot through my telescope 
It's hard to see with the phone and the camera, but that's okay. Um, you can say hi to people on YouTube. Um, and this is this is Jupiter's great red spot through the telescope. You can see this being broadcast live on YouTube right now. So if you want to check out the feed with a much better view, um, check out my link in my profile and check out um, everything on uh, those links there. And there is a YouTube link to go and watch this watch this feed. So uh, all the people on YouTube are hearing me talk about. Instagram, so maybe they can check this out. So anyway, all right, that's all I wanted to say, and uh, go check out the link in my profile to watch the YouTube live stream. And let's do this. Switch it back. All right. <laughs> See you guys on YouTube. Okay. Let's share it to my story. Oh, social media. It, it takes a lot of work. Okay, I think we should switch, should we? Ew, that focus is about as good as it's gonna get. I'm telling you right now. That is gorgeous. Holy crap. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, we're going to do this. Okay, so this is red. We're going to do 45 seconds of each color. And I'll put this over here so you can even watch the fire capture auto run sequence. It is riveting stuff. This is awesome, isn't it? Aren't you excited? Okay. There we go. So, we're shooting 45 seconds. I'm, I'm upping it to 45 seconds. I want more frames. I'm tired of, of not enough frames. We're going to see what we can do. Even if I have to derotate this, I don't care. So derotation, I've said derotation a couple times in this live stream. What derotation is, is the thing is, okay, so a day on Jupiter is a little over or around 10 Earth hours. So 10 hours on Earth, 10 hours is, to us humans, is one day on Jupiter. Now, what we understand about Jupiter is it's huge, okay, it's massive. It's so much bigger than Earth, but it rotates more than twice as fast as Earth. So it is screaming. It is going so fast. So when we see this great red spot transit the planet, it's actually it's going by quick. So you can't really you can't really take photographs for that long before you start to lose data because of literally image blur. Because what we're doing is we're stacking you know, a certain amount of seconds of video frame into one static image. Uh, so you can't, you can't do that um, without losing detail because of, you know, literally image blur. So, um, so yeah, sorry about that. Now we're doing more imaging here of the great red spot on Jupiter. This is blue. We just did red and green. We're now on blue. After this, we're going to switch over to luminance. Yes, the GRS. So part of the issue with these planetary targets is they're so small um, in comparison to 
larger targets in space. Um, WinGPost is actually quite easy to use once you do it once or twice. Um, so somebody on the YouTube on the YouTube comments, Ernie asked um, how hard WinGPost is. WinGPost is software that allows you to compensate for the rotationary period of a planet um, while you image it. So the problem is when you know when you image planets, we actually run into problems with rotation um, issues. You know the planet rotates while we are actually imaging it, and so sometimes what you can do to clean that up is you can derotate it where the software goes through um, the frames of either your video or your actual still image frames, and it moves them. It, it creates a map of the planet using your image data that you've collected. It creates a map of that and it derotates it. It actually counteracts the rotation of the particular planet that you're using based on the timestamp and the time data of um, of your image. Sorry, I'm also focusing. And um, it's really difficult to understand how it works. Um, and there's a lot of features of the software that's free to do that with, but it's quite difficult to use um, the first time. But once you do it once, it's actually quite easy um, and quick to use. So I was just answering Ernie's question there. <sighs> now I need to do another image anyway. Maybe I'll just do like two minutes of loom. What do you think? I think two minutes of loom is the way to go. <laughs> much hard drive space. I've got a hundred gigabytes of hard drive space, so not bad. Ooh, it's looking good. Uh, two minutes. Two minutes. Let's do it. Oh, I just got some wobble. I'm going to wait for this wobble to settle, and then we're going to smoke it. We are going to image the crap out of this as soon as this wobble settles. Just in loom, just to get like one amazing, I want one decent image. It's Jupiter's big, but I think it's difficult to image because there's just these small details that you always want to get, and they're just hard to get right. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's grab that. Let's let's just do that. What do you say? Centered. I'm just going to grab two minutes of luminance just because I want to. Um, actually, so Donald Smith on YouTube just asked, "Do I lose? Do I lose um, a little bit of detail on the edges?" Um, Actually, what you, you can gain detail on the edge because what it'll do is different color filters will um, fill in kind of the gaps of those. I swear, oh my god, this is so good now. This is looking so good. Sorry, I'm just looking at the focus and it's really, really nice right now. The, the atmosphere has got really stable. Jeez. Oh, that's really good. Okay, we're going to do a full image on as soon as this is done. Um, so, you gain a little bit all the way to the edge, um, but it's still kind of offset. So, the center of the planet is still going to be better because there's more data of the center. But um, the edges, you know, are going to be better than they were if you had only done, say, one. And what you can also use when Jupos 4 when you do derotation is you can combine multiple image capture, capture sessions. So say you do a whole bunch of, of image runs over the course of, say, 20 minutes in a row, um, and then you combine those into one image. It can take all that data and smooth it out even better 
and you'll get an even better final image because it takes all of that at once. And seriously, this is looking really, really nice. The atmosphere has cleaned up quite a bit. I'm pretty impressed with the. As soon as this is done in about 10 seconds, we're going to do a full on automatic um, imaging run. Jeez. Okay, I need to switch this to red. And then we're going to do another image capture. Oh, this is really good. Okay, wow, this is good. This is looking nice. I hope I can get a decent image of this thing out of this. Yeah, multiple stacking runs, it's cool. Um, if you look at the pros, uh, when I say pros, I mean um, people like Christopher Goh and um, Damien Peach. Um, they, you know, they'll always do, they'll always do derotation because it helps so much. It looks so good when you, when you use the derotation procedures because there's so much you lose. You, you can use so much more data. If, if you can sit there and, and take like say five minutes of video of a planet all at once in a row and if you could use that um, it's great because you get so many usable frames and such more sharper data um, and I mean I mean I do this for fun this is this is cool and everything I enjoy it but a lot of times it's not worth the effort because it's, it's all quite a bit of effort um, you know I don't want to do this as a day job I, I just want to inspire people and you know show people the universe and all this cool stuff but you know, every once in a while, I will use when Jupos and do some derotation, and um, it's amazing. Uh, it works. It works so good. So yeah, um, Damien Peach, Christopher Go, some of the other uh, great imagers. There's a lot, there's a lot of other great you know, planetary imagers out there, and those are the two top ones I think. And yeah, they'll always use derotation. So yeah, like we see now, we're getting you know, eight thousand nine hundred frames. In 45 seconds, getting 198 frames per second with um, this camera at the moment, um, and this is this is looking really good. Yeah, I hope you may not appreciate it because you know, as a lot of people, you don't do a lot of planetary imaging. You may not understand, but this this is looking amazingly good right now. Um, it's just some of the best seeing I've seen. I'm really impressed with this. And the telescope's at about, I don't know, I want to say about 60 degrees above the horizon right now. So I know the folks in the Northern Hemisphere don't want to hear that, but for now, the Southern Hemisphere is the place to be for planets. Um, the planets do not get as high in the Northern Hemisphere. David Bill. How's it going, David? Good old friend of mine. Uh, the temperature here, I don't know what the temperature here is, Dave. I'm going to have to look it up. What, is, what does Google say? Uh, 12 degrees. It is 12 degrees centigrade. 12 degrees Celsius in Johannesburg right now. I'm kind of cold, actually, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so planetary imaging is a is a... It's a different animal. It's I never really even appreciated it until I got kind of into it and understood the complexities of it because it's pretty it's pretty crazy um, how much extra work it is to do planetary stuff, good planetary stuff, really good planetary stuff. Yeah, you know, it's 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 kind of a whole it's a whole nother segment of astrophotography. Um, I've done DSO, planetary, wide field, um, Milky Way stuff, um, solar imaging. Um, I've kind of tried to do it all. I, I want to get my my hands dirty on every aspect of of astrophotography, and um, I want to be 
you know, have a working knowledge of, of, of it all. And I think of all of it, man, I want to say, I want to say planetary is the most frustrating just because it's taken me so long to get somewhat decent at it. And I mean, I don't consider myself good at planetary imaging at this point. I don't think my results, I, can, I cannot pick one of my um, images of Jupiter and say, you know, I'm proud of it. I can't give you an, one of my Jupiter images and say I'm proud of it. Let's hope that changes soon. I'm really trying to up my game with this and trying to get this nailed um, this season. Um, you know, but yeah, I'm not proud of my, I'm not proud of my planetary work. Saturn, I've been, I've liked, um, relatively, I think my lunar stuff, my moon images have been pretty good, which is similar to planetary, but it's, it's also different. I mean, it's, lunar is quite a bit easier than, than the planets. Jupiter though, you know, everybody loves Jupiter. I love Jupiter, but I think it's tough to get a really nice image. It's so tough. But this is looking quite good right now. So I'm burning up hard drive space. Did I just make the focus even better? No. It's so stable. Oh my god. Okay. I'm going to do this again. I think I've got it better. We're gonna do this again. You gotta watch. You gotta watch this. I've only got 80 gigabytes of hard drive space. This takes quite a bit of hard drive space to do this stuff as well. So, um, my imaging computer that I use for planetary astrophotography is an old Macintosh, um, an old Mac, MacBook Pro that I've had for about eight years now. <laughs> And it's, um, I'm running boot camp on it, running Windows. And I'm still running Windows 7 on this thing. It's ridiculous. And yeah, this is actually really good seeing. Ernie, you are right. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm just hoping that I get a good image out of this. If I don't, then I'm, I'm a failure and I'm just going to get rid of all my, my gear because I don't deserve it. But this is pretty intensely good. This is amazing. <laughs> Wow. Jeez, this is so good. The clouds are gone. Mm. I mean, this is never this good. I think this is the, this is that soft spot. This is that that soft spot. That that good spot. This is this is amazing. Amazingly good seeing. I mean, usually here in Joburg, I mean, we're the you know, we're like the New York City of, of the continent of Africa. So, like Shooting in the middle of the city is usually horrible. So many heat currents, so much stuff, so much concrete we deal with. So I think this time of day, of day, of night, it's 4, 4, 12 in the morning, you know, is probably the best time to shoot just because what we're getting, you know, is, is that temperature variation has, has ended, um, you know, the, the, the concrete and the brick and everybody, everybody's houses, the roofs, you know, is, is done, has finally acclimated um, to the temperature. So you run into issues, atmospheric seeing issues, um, you run into pollution, air pollution is bad um, here in Johannesburg. Um, you know, you get all that heat from the big city, you get, you know, it's, it's all of that, those issues that we run into. Um, but right now, I mean, this is amazing. This is really good. This is looking so good. All these colors, usually blue never looks that good. Uh, look at this luminance. I mean, you may not appreciate this, but oh, this looks so good. This is incredibly calm. This video stream looks almost as good <laughs> as one of my stacked images from the last time I did this. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. This is so nice. 
This is so nice. Wow. I'm so glad to share this with you. Oh, it's so nice. Wow. Oh. Wow. Okay, we're going to do another one. We have to. We can't not. We can't not. Okay. We're going to switch to red again, and I'm going to do another image run because we can't not do it. We can't not. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If anybody has any questions while I'm having a nerd freak out, let me know because I can answer. Um, anything you want to know about um, the imaging, um, I can look up some information about Jupiter. Because <laughs> this just looks good. Checking my socials too. Taking care of the socials. So, do I? I don't want to sound like a YouTuber. Oh no! No! Come back! No! Oh no! It's looking so good and my telescope just did its stupid thing. Oh no, I gotta bring it back. I'm so angry now. So I just have to. I just had what? called backlash with the telescope. Oh, I'm so annoyed. It's fixable, but it's annoying. Okay. Now I have to start over. Oh. This is what I get for not using a, you know, not spending a million dollars on a super nice telescope mount. But that's okay, because I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm going to have to start this over now. Lame. <sighs> that's okay. At least it looks cool. Huh? No! Why is it doing that again? Come back. Come back. There we go. Mm -hmm. There. Let's start this again. Mount problems. Hopefully we get through a whole image se sequence here without any more issues like that. That's just annoying. Somebody says on on Twitter, somebody has asked, uh, watching on my TV, so I can't ask in the YouTube chat, will you stack any of these with the moons as well? Um, no, I'm not going to stack any with the moons. The moons are too far away at the moment um, from the planet, so there won't be any moon stacking going on right now. Um, thank you for the question. Yeah, no moons. I'm not going to stack any of the moons right now. Okay, what do we got here? Um, let's 
see any other questions that I missed. I just don't want this to screw up again. Oh, are we losing some? No, it's still looking pretty good. Can you wear one, Steve? Yeah. Oh, this looks great. Things are looking good. See, I don't have to worry about the histogram. You have to worry about the mount screwing up. It's worth it, though. The frustrations of an astrophotographer. So you just watched basically me geek out. So you watched me nerd out. You watched a nerd freak out, and you watched another nerd freak out in a bad way when I was pissed about the mount. So you've seen it all now. Yeah, I feel bad, you know, for you folks in the north. I mean, I used to live in the northern hemisphere, um, and. I feel bad right now with the planetary stuff because I did a little bit of planetary a long time ago with my Dobsonian um, on an equatorial platform with my DSLR and then with a webcam and um, I mean I got some pretty good results it, it got a lot colder I lived in Iowa it got a lot colder um, and you know really really cold days and cold nights are actually great for um, for astrophotography and this is just looking good I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let this go to waste I'm sorry I'm gonna image some more um, this is too good this is just too good so we're gonna move back to red again and do another image run uh, it's actually an older um, Celestron CGEM DX mode um, it's going to do just the focus, just a smidge. Okay, we're going to do this again now. Okay. All right, so CGEM DX mount, Celestron CGEM DX. And it's, yeah, it's um, pretty decent, pretty decent mount. Um, but it's overloaded. I've got a, you know, this, this telescope, this 12-inch telescope that I have on it now is... Uh, it weighs 25 kilograms, um, just the telescope alone, so it's, it's heavy, you know, it's, it's pushing the limits of the mount, um, so it's pretty rough, but, you know, we are doing what we can, we've all got to just do what we can with the gear that we have, so, um, Oh, this is looking so good. <laughs> I'm so stoked. Um, I'm using what I have to, you know, to shoot the best that I can. And um, this mount being what it is, I can actually am not able to do any deep sky work with it because it's it's too heavy for the mount and it's overloaded. But Planetary and lunar, it works quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have backlash issues again if I'm not careful. Check for more questions. Cool. So the Twitter question I just got was, I don't know how to say your first name. So I'm not even going to say it, but it's in, it's someone in Long Island, New York, um, right in the, in the epicenter of all this madness that the world is going on. So, hey, I hope you're okay in Long Island. Um, I'm glad to bring you some telescope views. Um, of some of the cool stuff in the universe. Um, so keep watching and thank you for the question on Twitter. 
I'd say your first name, but I don't want to butcher it. I don't want to say it wrong, so I'm not going to. You can see that waver in the atmosphere now. Um, it looks like we're kind of running into some heat current issues in the atmosphere. But it's still quite nice. So I'm pretty happy with this. That great red spot has just passed the kind of the median point of the planet. And we could show we could show Saturn, we could do <laughs> long day. <laughs> Ernie Jacobs has had a long day. Um, you know, we could show Saturn, which we might move to um, in a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll end with with a little bit of Saturn just for some interesting stuff. But um, we're going to stick with the Jupiter and the Great Red Spot right now because this is just this is just too good. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? Think I should do? No, I'm going to save the hard drive space. I'm going to save it. Or should I do more? Should I do more imaging? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I ask you what you think, and then I do what, what I think. But, you know. We're going to switch over to red again. So I can have another proper geek out session with red and do some imaging here. Yeah, that's pretty decent. That looks pretty good. I say we go for it. See what happens. Yes, I'm doing it now. Okay, cool. So we're doing another image run because I can. And the scene is just too good not to shoot. Yeah. Weather's been hit or miss for me, um, so that's why I'm out here. Um, set my alarm for 1.50 in the morning. And um, I got up early so that I could show you guys this, but also so I could take pictures of it. I hope you all live, like the live streams that I've been doing. Um, when I can plan a little bit better, which I do want to do, um, um, we're going to have guests. Um, on here, I'll get some other people to join me that can give me some good information, um, some smarter people, some people that are much smarter than me. Um, and that can just kind of help out with the commentary, some friends of mine and some other people that I know that can give us some expert commentary on um, the planets and the moon and some of the other features that we're, we're looking at here. So it's not just me yammering on about, about imaging. Not that this isn't riveting, but, you know, there's other stuff to talk about, you know, um, planetary mechanics and all kinds of cool things. So, yes, David, it's possible. So, David Bill, um, on the comments right now, is being a snarky beast. Um, he's, a, he's an old friend of mine. And he's also a jerk. David, Bill, you're a jerk. <laughs> and I mean that in the warmest, in the warmest way. <laughs> so yes. Huda. How's it going, Huda? My friend Huda is on watching. This is, uh, if I remember right, this is Huda's favorite planet. But uh, I think this is... Everybody's favorite planet, except for Saturn. Uh, I think Saturn's my favorite, but dang, this is looking amazing. <laughs> I'm so stoked about how good this looks. Yeah. 
Wow, this is so good. Wow. Seriously, people appreciate this. This is atmospheric condition. Oh man, look at how clear it's getting. Oh. Amazing. Yeesh. You know, I'm not even going to bother shooting Saturn. I'm just going to burn my hard drive up with Jupiter because why would I waste this opportunity? It's just silly to waste this opportunity because you don't get scene conditions like this and I've been trying to up my game with Jupiter so only one way to do it is to shoot when it's amazing and that's what we got right here this is this is good Ooh, I'm excited Yeah, so let's have a poll. You know, everybody, everybody in the comments, I want you to vote. Jupiter or Saturn? What's your favorite, Jupiter or Saturn? Because, you know, I've always said Jupiter is cool, but Saturn is my favorite just because of that. When you, when you look at Saturn through the eyepiece of a telescope, it looks, it looks sci-fi. It looks like a sci-fi movie. Shut up, Dave. I wasn't asking you. <laughs> I guess I was asking you. You know, but Saturn just looks like a sci-fi movie. I, I, it's so cool. Um, Jupiter is awesome, and there's you know more detail and more cool things to look at. But I mean, Saturn has rings, man. You know, and it's just beautiful. It looks like a sci-fi movie. Jupiter's just man. It's just a ball. It's just a big ball of gas. Okay, big ball of stinky gas. Okay, we got two votes for Jupiter. What's up, Sharon? My friend Sharon. From the other, other side of the planet. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing okay with the madness in the world right now? Yeah, Jupiter wins. We only had two people vote. So Jupiter wins. Seeing Saturn. See? See? Ernie. Ernie just nailed it. Ernie's on my side. Seeing Saturn through a telescope changes your life. I think he's right. It does. It changes your life. You see the world through a different view. I mean, you look at that and you're just like, what? That's real? It is. It changes your life. You were right. Me and Ernie, we're not bros. Let me tell you, we are bros. <laughs> this is really cool, though, Ernie. I mean, when you can see the GRS, this is good. When it looks this good. Yeah, you, you can't. I mean, it's hard to beat this view. Oh, oh man. This looks so cool. I hope, the, I hope this video comes out. Oh, shoot. You know what I need to do is I need to switch... I need to switch it back to 30 seconds just in case. Because if I'm screwing up, then I've got to limit these videos. Or maybe I just limit the videos. Maybe I just do that. Maybe I stick with 45 because if it's really good, I don't want to not have the extra 15 seconds. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll just stick with 45 because it's just so good. Yeah, everything is in a standstill here as well. We're on... Um, what am I? I don't even know what when it when when is it right now? It's uh we've got a five week lockdown and there's about a week and a half yeah about a week and a half left of of our five week lockdown and look at the scene I mean come on give me a break it's just too good it's just too good. I'm adjusting focus now. It seems like it's getting a little wobbly. Am 
when we lose in our perfect seeing. It's possible. It's possible. It's becoming imperfect. Yeah, the seeing is pretty good, Sharon. If I don't get a good image out of this, I'm a failure, I think. So I'm trying to... Sorry if I go quiet. I'm trying to focus here on the task at hand. I lost some detail there. Is that focus or is that atmosphere? It's got to be the atmosphere. thing is with these focusers you, you're, you're literally moving so like I'm using a, a, a robotic focuser a remotorized focuser that I'm manually controlling and you the thing literally moves by micrometers like tiny 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 bits you can't move it that small with your hand so I'm completely sold on motorized focusers specifically for planetary and lunar if you're doing imaging completely it's just I think it's just damn required now that I've got one um, I'm using one by uh, my motorized focuser is by Prima Lucha Lab it's called the Sesto Senso uh, it works really really good um, Okay, so Shaorin asks how many, how long are my exposures per um, per color when I do the imaging? Uh, right now I'm doing 45 seconds, which is a little longer than you should. However, um, I'm only at f8, so I think that's okay. Um, I can always cut them down in post. Um, you're really supposed to keep it less than two minutes for the entire image, image run, but um, I don't care because I want more. I want more frames. I'm shooting about 200 frames per second right now. So Sharon had asked, um, how long yeah, do I shoot per color filter when I do these color image captures? Usually 30 seconds, but I'm switching it up and I'm going 45 seconds right now because I just want, I want more frames. I want cleaner, smoother, um, more better frames. I can always cut that down in post, so I'd rather shoot more than less. And I can always derotate if I absolutely have to. Ernie, I started with a daub <laughs> uh, as well. I wish I still had one. I actually would love to get a daub again. Um, so Ernie says he's a beginner with a daub and a ZWO um, 224 color camera. Uh, one, I need to have a color camera to do these because I'd love to be able to show you this stuff in color right now. This would be amazing. Um, and I really need to get a color camera for these live streams, but I just don't have one right now. <laughs> Um, I've inquired to find one, see if I can buy one locally, but getting stock in South Africa is really difficult. Um, and, um, yeah, it's just, it's difficult when things are good. So, especially right now, it's even more difficult. Anyway, um, that's beside the point. Uh, so, yeah, Ernie, um, I understand, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a hard road, like I said. I think it's easier to get good, um, get decent at, deep sky imaging than it is planetary, at least in, in my in my experience. I mean, it's easy to get mediocre images, mediocre planetary images where you're like, oh, okay, cool, that's a planet. But if you, if your standards <laughs> start really jacking up there, you're just like, oh man, you know, you want to get lots of planet detail, you want to get lots of stuff, and right now we're starting to lose the seeing conditions that aren't as good as they were before. But, um, if you really want to get a lot of those um, details, it's a bit soul crushing because you were really a slave to the atmosphere. Um, I think we've hit our our peak of beauty at the moment. Um, we would kind of lost the beautiful detail we were getting earlier. So luckily I was able to shoot it.
So we'll just stick with the GRS a little bit longer. But I think we should probably move to Saturn as well. Um, so yeah, like vote in the comments. Who wants to see a little bit of Saturn? Do we want to stick with Jupiter or do we want to move on to Saturn now? It's 4.30 in the morning here. So I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. I'm going to leave Jupiter here for a moment. And I will be right back. After I try and adjust this. Oh, it looks so good. That's just cool. That's just cool, huh? That's just cool. <laughs> Whoa, Saturn it is. Okay, all right. So we want to move on to Saturn? Uh, Mars. Man. Yeah, that is exciting, I suppose. Okay, we'll move on to Saturn just now. I'm going to leave Jupiter up for a couple of minutes. I'm going to get a drink. And... Then I'll be back and I will move it over to Saturn. Oh, this, looks, this looks nice though. This looks nice, but we will. Okay, so there's the great red spot of Jupiter. And because you asked for it, I am going to move over to Saturn now. Okay, moving to Saturn. So, bear with me and watch what happens. It's going to get crazy. <laughs> All right. So, that's Jupiter. And actually, it's interesting. In the guide scope here, you can see... If I jack that up, you can actually see... the Galilean moons of Jupiter there, um, which is pretty interesting, I suppose. So those are the four main Galilean moons of Jupiter in the guide scope. Let's zoom in for you. Oops, not, not out, let's zoom in. So those, that's Jupiter and the moons live in, in the guide scope. But now we're going to move over to Saturn. Okay, so there's the moons. And then look at that, they are in like a nice straight line, which is, which is cool. And this is just in the guide scope. This is just the view in the guide scope. So now I'm going to adjust this. 
and put the crosshair back on and I'm going to move the telescope over to ah, it's starting to get cold imagine Galileo looking at this for the first time and realizing that there's a moons that are orbiting another body that's orbiting the same sun that our planet is I mean yeah kind of makes you get all choked up and stuff sorta of. okay cool we're gonna move to Saturn now Okay, so that, that little dot that you see there that I'm, move, I'm moving the telescope. So we're going to center Saturn, and it should already be in focus. It'll probably be dim. Either way. It was about right there when it was in the middle ish. So, that's boring old Saturn, but there we go. Okay. Don't worry, I'll brighten it up. Yes, I know it's too bright. What we're gonna do is that. <clears throat> okay, so there we have Saturn. That looks really good too. That's pretty nice. The planet Saturn. It's not an IR. It's a moon. No. There we go. Yes, Saturn. And what we're seeing is indeed the Cassini division. So I'll talk about that a bit after I get this thing. Adjusted the way I want. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we probably need to adjust focus a little bit. Try and get this nailed. Better or worse? Mm. Mm, worse. No, come back. Come back, focus. There we go. A little better. Okay. So, someone has mentioned the Cassini division. The Cassini division is this line. I'm using the cursor. This little line in between the main ring groups. So there's, I think they're called A and B, the ring groups of Saturn. You have this internal bright ring and the external one, which is a little less bright. And this gap, this gap in between those rings that goes all the way around, is called the Cassini division. And it's kind of a like a well-known thing in the astronomy area. If you can see the Cassini division, um, that gap that means you know things are good that means it, it looks it looks like it's supposed to um, you know it's it's this atmosphere is relatively stable and things are just looking pretty good um, why is gamma on oh yeah that's why 
here. Turn up the brightness. There we go. Hopefully that's not overly bright. Turn this a little bit there. You can probably see the casino division nicely. 80 some percent on histogram. So yeah, that's Saturn and it's looking really good as well. So I'm obviously going to have to take some. Um, I'm just gonna do loom only. I think I'm gonna bail on color or maybe, maybe I just do like two minutes of color. What do you think? What do you think? That's what I think. Let's try it. Why not? I'm gonna make this area of interest even smaller. So I can actually set how many pixels the camera is using. Let's get this focus just dialed in. I want it smooth. We're going to do only black and white imaging. Only loom. My focus is kind of whacking out now. Hmm. I love Saturn. Although looking at it now versus Jupiter and the, the GRS that we were just looking at, I think I, I had a better sense of black. Wow, this is awesome. When we were looking at um, Jupiter, I, I think I enjoyed Jupiter more. I'm not going to lie. So that's how small Saturn is in the eyepiece of the camera. It's looking pretty good. Cheers, Ernie. You also have a great day. Someone on uh, Ernie is going to leave us for the moment. Waiting for this to get even more stable, which is probably silly of me to do, but. Let's see if I can get this focus any better before I do one more. Okay, so there we go. Someone must have, either you know stuff or you um, Googled it. Uh, yes, the distance between the A and B, so that gap, that gap we're seeing is about 4,800 kilometers. Um, it gives you a sense of scale, you know, I mean, this stuff is massive. And like we talked about um, Jupiter, we talked about Jupiter earlier being, you know, about 45 to 50 some minutes, light minutes away. So uh, what we're seeing when we look at Jupiter is about 45 to 55 or so um, minutes in the past, you know, literally looking at a time machine. Saturn is even further. Saturn is around 1.3 hours. So what we're seeing now, this image that we're seeing now of Saturn is about... 1.3 hours in the past. So, I mean, if that doesn't just kind of blow your mind, you know, there's something wrong with you because that's pretty freaking amazing. I'm just going to do a black and white image capture of this while we're looking at it. But again, 1.3 hours in the past. This is 1.3 hours ago. Almost an hour and a half. 1.3 hours ago, 
the light that reflected off Saturn. This is what it looks like. This is what Saturn looked like 1.3 hours ago. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to start calling this the telescope time machine live stream. <laughs> Come step into my time machine, the telescope time machine. What do you think? Hmm? If I had a hot tub, it'd be the hot tub telescope time machine. It'd be amazing. <laughs> so I'm doing a quick uh, luminance image capture right now. Yes. Yes, Dave. This is the telescope time machine. <laughs> David Bill says no. I say yes. I think this could work. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, we think the planets are far away, but the thing is they're super close. 1.3 hours. If you're traveling the speed of light, it'll take 1.3 hours to get to Saturn. This is 1.3 hours in the past. This is what we're seeing. 1.3 hours in the past. That's the, the think about the speed of light. I mean, it's it's fast, but it's also slow. I mean, just to get to the these planets in our other in our solar system around our star, which is only eight light minutes away. Saturn is so much further away from us than our sun. It takes about eight minutes for us to get to the sun from the Earth at the speed of light. But if you want to go to Saturn from our planet, it will take you 1.3 hours at the speed of light. The speed of light is about 300,000 kilometers per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. Just, just think about that. I mean, every single second, you'd be traveling 300,000 kilometers. How insanely intense is that when you consider the size of what we're looking at? This is nice of the software to keep the planet centered for me. Ooh, I should change. I should change what we're looking at because this is now Saturn. There we go. It looked better before. I should have started the image capture before. I'll wait for it to settle down, and then I'll do another image capture. I've already done one short one, just in, not in color, just in, just in black and white. That's good enough. I'll do an image session focusing on Saturn another another day. We focused on Jupiter today. I've already gotten over 120 gigabytes worth of um, image data tonight of Jupiter and just a little bit of Saturn here. So I think we're doing okay. Like I've said before, if anybody has any questions, feel free to fire away. I'm happy to answer anything that you ask you can really kind of use that Cassini division to see if our focus is is still good it seems like I kind of had it in the sweet spot the atmosphere isn't playing along quite as nice as it was for Jupiter but we're going to do it anyway. 
with my telescope time machine, Dave. My friend Dave, who's watching right now, doesn't like the idea of me calling this the telescope time machine, but I really like it. TTM, you know. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do another, another capture. There, see it looks cool when you write it out even. What do you guys think? Give me a yes or a no. Telescope time machine? What do you say? And why did the atmosphere just do that to me? It was looking really good. I think it's because I I said so. I said something and then it's decided to not be so good. Mimas is so so dim. It's like ridiculously dim. Yeah, see, telescope time machine told you. Haters gotta hate. You guys are my friends. <laughs> I'm with it. Okay, so somebody said it would be nice if we could see Venus, and it would be or Venus, um, Mimas, one of the moons um, of. Saturn, if I remember right, it's very, very small. Um, usually isn't close in. I, swear, I can't lose focus when I'm actually capturing. Okay, five more seconds. Mimas, yes, Mimas is like right in there. We might be able to see it. What I'm going to do now, we actually might be able to see some moons. I'm going to push it so we can see some moons. We're going to see some moons. Let's look at some moons. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. This is now. Yes, this is now. Okay, I'm using my Sky Safari app on my phone to look at this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this and then we're going to zoom out a little bit to about there okay now make sure that's centered and we're gonna go and we're gonna look what is that 320 let's remember that Gonna move this. Okay, now we're gonna start seeing some moons. We're gonna see Mimas. Okay, this is horrendous, but that's how it has to be. If you want to see moons, this will give you an idea. Okay, so what we're seeing right now. Why can't we see Mimas? It's so we can. Can we? No. Um This is backwards. This is backwards. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the ephemeris data. It doesn't have the moons on there. That's not helpful. Okay, so those these are the moons. Mimas is just too dim. It's too close to the planet. There's too much, too much going on. So, okay, I will tell you what we what we're looking at here. Oh, Mimas is just too dim, too close to the planet. This is Titan, right here. This is the moon Titan. Okay, so everybody. My friend Huda has been watching. 
she is a healthcare worker in the UAE. She's a doctor. She's a healthcare worker. She's dealing with COVID-19 patients. So I want everybody to give her a huge fist bump right now. Um, she's going to work at the hospital right now to care for the health of the people with COVID-19 in the UAE right now. So I want everyone to give her a fist bump. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now back to these moons. This is Titan. This moon here is Titan. This moon here is Tethys or Tethys. This moon here is Rhea or Rhea. I don't know how to pronounce it. This is Dion. 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 And this is Enceladus. Mimas would be right around here somewhere, but it's just too close to the planet for us to really see. So that's why. So those are the moons. Those are the moons, the bigger moons that are close to Saturn. So now we take the game and we drop it back down to where we were before. And we're going to lose the moons but at least we get to see Saturn. Drop our game back down to there. Well, this is kind of cool. We'll be able to see Titan and Saturn at the same time. That's kind of neat. I like that. Let's drop the gamma a little. Actually, let's leave the gamma up there. Normally you never image with the gamma this high, but I want to try and get a couple of moons in there because they're just cool. So we're going to center that and there we go. We do a quick image capture. Let's hope. Come on, atmosphere, play with us here. Play nice. Tell the atmosphere to play nice. We are a little bit overexposed. Oh, that's fine, because that's Titan up there. Titan will, will push through. Um... And do that. <laughs> okay. Oh no, oh no. I forgot I can't do this with the gamma. Sorry about that. Capturing with gamma is, is naughty. Okay, so we're just going to have to do this the hard way. think we'll get any Titan? I don't think so. Nope, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So we will just turn off this silly stuff. Drop this back down and recenter the planet. Make it big again because, you know, we deserve it. Well, I didn't mean to do that. I'll roll with it. I accidentally started an imaging run. <laughs> we'll go with it. It's not going to turn out very nice, but that's fine.
Okay, so this is Saturn. <sighs> Makes me think maybe we should look at a little tiny peanut acorn Mars just now. It's going to look horrible though. We can also go back to Jupiter. Okay, so let's take a vote. Do we want to... Okay, so Mars is going to be small, and it's not going to look very good. It's going to look bad. But it'll be small, and it'll be like a phase. It's just not that cool right now. Okay. Um, we could stay on Saturn, or we could go back to Jupiter and see what the great red spot's doing. So... You all have to decide and let me know. what you want to do. Viewer's choice. I kind of vote for the great red, red spot again. What do you think? I'm going to check out social, see if I need to respond to anything there. Back to Jupiter. Okay, cool. Let's go back to Jupiter. Okay, so enjoy this last look at Saturn. We're going to go back to Jupiter and see what's going on with the red spot. You're allowed to vote, Dave. Dave's allowed to vote. He's, he doesn't think he's allowed to vote. He's allowed to vote. He can vote. Let's go back to Jupiter. Okay, we're going to do that. Now I just have to readjust these things. Go back to the Oops, not the right. There's those moons again. Whoa, 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 slow down there, fella. You guys are watching me struggle. Are you laughing? You should laugh. Okay. Go back to old Jupe. There's the red spot. Still looking good like it was earlier, that's cool. Okay. I say we make it bigger. Okay, if we see a bright flash, now everybody, this is going to be the, the geeks in us. If we see a bright, a bright spot, okay, we will, s that means that we're going to see like a meteor crashing in to Jupiter. So if you see that, scream in the comments and stuff, because that'll be intense.
I'm gonna try and get to focus on there. Make sure so I'm not watching perfectly. So you have to help me. If you see a bright flash, tell me so we can get, save the video. Although it'll be on YouTube, so it'll be saved. Trying to get this focus a little bit better. It's weird, it changes based on the temperature and angle of the telescope and all kinds of different things. Hey, I can see my breath. Check this out. Can you see that? Not even that cold. It's cold enough though. Yeah, it is quite nice. See that red spot started down here at the beginning of the live stream. It's moved all the way to there. <clears throat> so by the time the sun starts coming up. It's going to be popped out the other side. I think we can turn this gain up a little bit. See, like, I just want to keep shooting, you know? I don't need to. We've shot so much of this. I probably should though. It's just like the right thing to do. But just at least black and white. We'll we'll, we'll just do a monochrome luminance image. <clears throat> because it just it's it's just so good. This looks so good. So we're gonna auto align. Okay. And We'll do two minute luminance image room. Because I mean this 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 looks so uh, it looks pretty good. Like I said, this is the great red spot for anybody who has joined us recently. We're back to Jupiter. Oh, I need to change my overlay back. So this is Jupiter and the Great Spot. Oh, make sure this thing stays centered. Does look pretty good. Things get quiet here at the end of the live stream. Turn off the 
and all the line. I want a nice clean, a nice clean view. Let's adjust the gamma so that maybe some of those details show up even better. Does that even help? I don't know. It's kind of a toss up. Maybe a little. And dial it back a little bit. There. It's a pretty nice view. So we're seeing uh, the north equatorial cloud band and the south equatorial cloud band there let's switch over to green green filter so there's green So this is only only letting green light through to, to the camera sensor. So, um, you know, we get a little bit more redness in the red spot. Redness, when I say redness, I mean darkness in the red spot. Um, Like if we switch to blue, this is blue. So this is the blue filter. It's only letting blue light through. Okay, and then if we go to red, it's gonna look kind of weird because all of a sudden that red spot almost disappears it's right here but because this is the red light that means anything that you see that's lighter in color is more red than the darker color stuff so the red spot is here and it's going to be lighter because there's more red in it than, than elsewhere on the planet so this is the red spot when you look at it with a red filter. So then if we go back to the luminance, where it's all three colors, red, green, and blue, this is, you know, the full visible color spectrum, basically a clear glass filter. Makes me wonder, do I have enough hard drive space to do another image run? Where were we with our color filters? Go back to blue. That needs to be bumped. I'm gonna try and keep everything at about 80 to 90 percent. Let's go back to green. Green up to almost 90%. Okay, so there's green, and let's move to red. I can move red up also while everything needs to be jacked up to quite a bit. Okay, so there's that. 90% area and this is kind of where we start so I'm just going to do an imaging run I'm going to change it to 40 
I'm going to change it to 30 seconds for all of them at 30, 30, 30, and 30. let's do, yeah, it would better, better be 30 for all of them. So we'll do 30 seconds for everything. So then we'll switch over to auto align. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Get that guy in the middle. And we will start and color <clears throat> imagery sequence. See if I have enough hard drive space. I've got 18 gigabytes left of hard drive space. Let's see how this works. Let's see how much left I've got. Sharon says our disk space is the planetary imagers enemy number one and he's completely correct and that looks like I'll have enough space to do a couple of color imaging runs here it just eats it up so fast that's why there's a thing called ROI not return on investment but um, or area of interest let's say AOI <clears throat> not ROI it must be five o'clock in the morning it is um, so area of interest is is basically where it takes a small section of your of your camera sensor and it only captures that area of the sensor so that it's using as little data um, transfer from the camera to the computer as it needs as you tell it to. So you're not using the full resolution, you're only using the little bit of the sensor that you that you need for the planet because the planet takes up such a small a small part of this of the camera sensor. I mean this is tiny. The, the camera sensor is about the size, you know, of, of you know your pinky fingernail um, on this particular camera and we're you know using I don't know, something the size of a pinhead. You know, Jupiter is about the size of a pinhead on the camera sensor right now. And so that's why, you know, when I talk about how, you know, timing and, and focus and all of that in the atmosphere is, is so key, it's just because it's so tiny, you know? It is so tiny uh, on, the, on the camera sensor. And it, in the telescope and I mean I'm using this telescope is the equivalent of a camera lens that is 2304 millimeters and even then on that little camera sensor you know it's only the size of a pinhead so we're gonna do another color imaging run because I can and it looks pretty good so we're gonna do it again So this is red. You remember with red, you can't see it very well. So bear with us here. So as soon as this is done in about 15 seconds, it'll switch back to green and we'll be able to see the red spot again, which is right up here. Remember, the red spot is not dark in the red filter. Okay, so now it's going to switch to the next color. And after this imaging run, I'm actually going to just leave Jupiter up Maybe I'll do a couple others. I've still got a few gigs left. <laughs> I'm going to fill those hard drives up completely. The sun's starting to come up. I'm going to make some coffee just now. <laughs> 
You know, I didn't mean to fill up my hard drive tonight. I didn't think I would fill up my hard drive. But I just so happened to be doing so. Just looks too good. Although it looked better before, didn't it? Yeah, it's not as good now as it was earlier. So I'm gonna call it quits with the imaging. And I'm just gonna let us look at Jupiter <laughs> and the red spot. For a few more minutes. And then I'm going to go make a call. It's getting cold. How long have you been doing this? Two minutes and f or two hours and 45 minutes. Not bad. You know, I still haven't polar aligned my telescope either. I just eyeballed it and you know, moved them out when I got some unwanted motion which I'm still getting so I need to move the mount even more for next time but that's okay I should have worn my bigger jacket it's a little chilly what did I say it was 12 degrees earlier what is it what does my phone say it is now I don't even know let's see Eleven now. It's eleven degrees. The bad news is it's looking clear the next few nights. Next couple of nights. Tonight, tomorrow, yeah. I don't know if that's bad or good. Okay, I'm going to do another two minute luminance capture. It looks pretty good. Maybe we'll get some nice details before I go. I can't, I'm like an addict. I'm like, oh, one more, one more hit. One more hit of this image. I think we can get it better. Hmm. Hard to say. It's almost softer. I'm just micro adjusting the focus. Little bits. I don't know. I bet it's not that great right now. I bet we were better earlier because I know I could see more detail in the north and south, you know, hemisphere areas of the planet. So right now it's just it's just viewing time. Why am I capturing? I did that thing where I accidentally image captured again. Must be because I'm tired. Okay, this will be the last one. This will be the countdown. When that timer in the upper, upper left gets to 120 seconds. I'm going to say goodbye, and we will be done with this 
live stream of Jupiter and its great red storm. Yeah, it's so fast. Ten hours. Such a big planet and it rotates fully, full rotation in about ten hours. It's insane. Okay, so everybody, we've got about <clears throat> 20 more seconds of this live stream, and then I'm going to say goodbye. So I'm going to say it now. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. And, yep, see you guys. Okay, so, yeah, everybody, thanks for watching. See you next time. You know, Jupiter and the great red spot. Right there on the screen. Let's see which way is right there. Right there. Yeah, right there on the screen. And we pretty much watched most of the transit across the face of the planet. Can't get much more than that. Have a good day, night, whatever time it is for you there. For me, it's 5.30 in the morning. Time to make coffee and get ready for a day job. And I'm going to do some image stacking in the background on my laptop behind my work. You know, because it's, you know, you push a button and then you just wait. But, um, yeah. This is pretty cool. It's turned out well. I'm pretty happy with, with the evening. So cheers and have a good one.